Hey you guys, thanks for joining me today and for this lesson we're going to do this landscape here and I am starting off with a wash of a purpley pink sort of mix. So I've got rose and French ultramarine and a touch of yellow to dull it down. So while this is still wet I am coming in with a very gray mix and that is making my purple again and adding the yellow to gray it and you can see I am working on a rough press paper here and it's 300 pound so <clears throat> it's going to stay wet for a long time once it gets damp like this so you have plenty of time to play around and uh, as you can see it creeps out into the wet areas and gives me those soft fudgy fuzzy edges that already make those tree shapes for me. So I'm giving it a misty look at the bottom of those trees by sort of softening those edges and fading them out and then I'll pull down the rest of the wash. Uh, I let it break up a little bit in the land area and now I'm pulling in the water and the water is reflecting the sky so I'm making the same color mix uh, but getting more intense with the color as I get closer and that will create a sense of distance. You can see that path of water I left over to the side there and that is where my beam of light is going to come through and I want to keep the yellows nice and bright and not gray them too much with those purples so you got to keep kind of a clear area where you can throw down that yellow. And then I kind of pull it out into the purples and blend it a little bit and uh, as you can see this rough press gives me plenty of time to sort of play around without getting any blossoms. And then I'll dash, <clears throat> just dash a couple of yellows here and there into the water. It's just some light reflecting there. So we're going to create a sense of distance in the land now and I am starting with this kind of muddy brown wash and I made that with uh, French ultramarine and Chinese orange and then I'm adding rose to it to warm it even more. Uh, but you want to keep it kind of softer and grayer as it's further away and I keep dashing little bits of extra color into the mix because it softens and lightens as it's drying and soaking into this super thick 300 pound paper. Um, now I'm going to spritz it in the back just to keep those edges nice and soft and everything moist. I'm going back and forth from color and then more of a watery grayed down mix in between just to make it look like uh, there's kind of lumps in the ground and also makes kind of a misty hazy look in there too. And then as it lightens too much then I just keep dashing the color back in. Now make sure you have plenty of rose in this mix. Um, I found that it looked too dull without adding more rose into it. Now you can see as I'm getting closer uh, I want to make the land look like it's getting closer so I build up that color and make it more intense in the foreground parts. And then here I have kind of messed up my brush a little bit and made a really dark mix with the purple adding the yellow to darken it and just very little water and just flinging up these little grass shaped marks into the field. So this makes it look also a little bit more lumpy and um, gives you a sense that there are things really far away. And then I'm pulling down the reflections where the really dark grasses are at. Remember the water is always reflecting what is above it, whether it's the sky or the grasses or the trees. <clears throat> and then. I'm just going to keep intensifying this color to get it warm enough. So this is more orange and rose going back in there. 
I found that this really thick um, rough paper, the color tends to flatten and dry as it dries, so I had to keep pushing it and pumping it up a little bit. And here is a fun little trick for adding more texture and giving some nice highlights back into there. And I am using an X-Acto knife to just carve little scrapes and chunks. All those textures make it look like you have a lot more detail too. So I'm darkening my reflections now. And with a purple mix, I am putting in this fence that's leaning into the water here. And I want to try to keep it kind of wobbly and loose. And here I'm coming in with the gouache and I'm giving some highlights back onto here with the wash. And I just blot it off where it's a little too much. And then I will add some of the darker parts. And the shadows <clears throat> give it plenty of contrast. And then it helps separate it from the background too. And just for fun, I am adding some of that Cinnarus blue into the white gouache to get these kind of baby blue highlights and then adding some of that Cinnarus blue also into the foreground. And over here along the reed edges, it just gave it kind of a nice soft look adding that extra little bit of blue. So now I have here uh, a dagger brush and I put this one in extra fast motion just because this part takes a really long time to do but you can see how I lightly pull up all of those marks to keep them very fine and delicate and just using one quick stroke make all these little leaves. And I go from dark at the bottom to the light ones at the top. I switch back and forth with that positive and negative thing. And now I'm just coming in with the final touches. Um, Pulling off some of those darks by putting some blue into them to get them even darker. And with gouache mixed with some of the paint, I'm going to add a few more highlights back into the water.
And then I warm them back up a little bit. And that's pretty much it for this one, you guys. Thank you for joining me. And please feel free to send me any questions. And I will see you back again next time.